Zoax.net. Lesson 4. Quotations. Quotations may seem like an insignificant part of HTML, but they are perfect for illustrating some of the most important concepts of HTML. Here's a biblical passage with a few quotations inside it. These quotations are marked by quotation marks in the original document. This is one way to create quotation marks and it is perfectly valid. However, there is a better way to create quotation marks. We can replace these quotation marks with quotation or Q elements like this, placing a start tag in place of the starting quotation mark and an end tag in place of the ending quotation mark. Opening the document now, we see that it looks exactly the same. It isn't clear what has been gained by the use of these quotation elements. It just seems like more work at this point. But as we will see, there are several advantages to using the quotation element. First, the quotation element provides the browser with an implicit understanding of where quotations start and end. So if we would like to turn the quotations red, as is commonly done for Christ's words in some editions of the Bible, we can do it fairly easily with styling like this. In this case, the document retains information about what is inside a quotation, unlike using simple quotation marks. The section of text, from the start tag to the end tag inside the quotation element, is understood to be part of a quotation. In fact, quotation elements look like this. The blocks of text inside the gray boxes are quoted text, and each separate box represents a separate quotation. This is a little tricky, though. There are exactly five quotation elements, as labeled here. Some of these wrap around to one or more lines of text. This should seem odd because all of the elements that we have had so far are block-level elements that form their own lines. On the other hand, we can have multiple quotation elements on the same line, and they can even wrap around to multiple lines. This is known as an inline element. There are two basic types of elements, block-level and inline. To illustrate the difference between block level and inline, we have placed a border around the block level P element and a gray background on the inline Q elements. Notice that the block consists of a single line and controls its content. The inline quotation elements sit inside it. Often when quoting, there's a quote within a quote. In this case, the inner quote is surrounded by single quotes, as we show here. In this example, we have gone back to using quote characters. Opening the page, we see the single quote marks inside the double quote areas. These quote characters again carry no information about the quoted regions. However, we can replace both the double quote marks and the single quote marks in this example by quotation tags like this. When we open this page, we see that the single and double quotation marks are correctly placed despite the fact that we have made no distinction between the two when we place the quotation tags. The quotation elements are correctly interpreted by the browser, with the single quote marks automatically placed on the internal quotation element. Note that the quotation elements have an understood nesting, which we can illustrate like this. The light gray regions highlight the double quoted elements, and the darker gray regions highlight the single quoted elements within the double quoted elements. This demonstrates how inline elements can be nested inside each other. In addition to inline quotes, we have block quotes. When quoting large sections of text, the quote is made into a block without quotation marks. Note that this last example is itself a large block of text from a particular edition of the Bible. So we can replace the paragraph element by a block quote element and add a paragraph element to introduce the block, like this. This will cause the formatting of the quoted paragraph to be changed slightly. As you might expect, the block quote element is a block level element, as the name implies, and as this page shows. Notice that the block quote is indented more than the ordinary paragraph element above it, as it should be. We can visualize the elements like this with blocks around the block elements and gray backgrounds on the inline elements. This is a good visual representation of the difference between block level elements and inline elements.